Everybody, hey, Joey Gilbert here. Uh, you know what time it is. It's that COVID update time. Uh, I want to get everybody to uh, jump in there on this. I want everybody in the comments. I want to see people uh, interact today because this is a big this is a big update. This is a big report. And um, I think the governor is going to be going on the TV here any minute and talking about how he's going to probably stop the insanity as far as it applies to our sports and our high school sports and whatnot like they're doing in you know, dozens of states across the country. But right now, I want to talk about a couple things. Um, everybody, you know, we know President Trump has tested positive for the coronavirus. I'm not worried, not even a little bit about him. Um, we know how to, we know what, we know who to treat. We know how to treat him. We know what's working. And so that's not something I'm concerned about. Uh, people are going to test positive for this virus for the next year. And we're not going to jump up and down every time someone tests positive for the flu, are we? Well, now, according to the statistics, this is less deadly than the flu. So, I want to roll through this real quick, guys. M Dr. Mike Yeadon, former chief science officer for Pfizer, on erroneous second wave predictions based on COVID false positive tests. He says the pandemic is over. Dr. Samadhi on Twitter, quoting another doctor, our results indicate that public immunity to COVID-19 is significantly higher than the antibody tests have suggested. This is Professor Lundgren at the Center for Infectious Medicine in the Karolinska Institute. If this is the case, it's very good news from a public health perspective. Dr. Yerdin also argues that the threshold for herd immunity may be much lower than previously thought, and it may have been reached in many countries already, thus making a huge wave of new COVID cases very unlikely. So guys, here's what's important. Dr. Mike Yerdin, former Chief Science Officer, for the pharmaceutical giant Pfizer says that there's no science to suggest a second, a second wave should happen. False positives, false positive results from inherently unreliable COVID tests are being used to manufacture a second wave based on new cases. Do you hear that? Okay. Half or e almost all of tests for COVID are false positives. I'm going to say that again. Half or almost all tests for COVID are false positive. Why would they be doing this? A government policy, an economic policy, and a civil liberties policy in terms of limiting people to six in a meeting is based on completely fake data on COVID and false positives. Also, given the shape of all important indicators worldwide in a worldwide pandemic, for example, hospitalizations, ICU, utilization and deaths, the pandemic is fundamentally over. Wow. And just like the WHO, the World Health Organization said, it's now being referred to as an outbreak. We're, we're, we're in it not for the test data. We're, we're, excuse me. We're, were it not for the test data that you get from the TV all the time, you would rightly conclude the pandemic was over as nothing much has happened. Of course, people going to the hospital, moving into autumn flu season, but there is no science to suggest a second wave should happen. The survival rate of COVID is now estimated to be 99.8%, similar to the flu and prior T cell immunity. One more time, the survival rate of COVID is now estimated to be 99.8% and we've shut down the country and the state. Although COVID can have serious after effects, so can the flu or any respiratory illness for that matter. Such after effects can be much worse from other diseases, including the flu. According to Dr. Yearden, the novel 19 contagion is novel only in the sense that it's a new type of coronavirus. More than half of the positives are likely to be false, potentially all of them. Do you guys understand what's happening here? The authors explain that what the PCR test actually measures is simply the presence of partial RNA sequences present in the intact virus, which could be a piece of dead virus, which cannot make the subject sick, cannot be transmitted, and cannot make anyone else sick. This is what they're using to keep you locked down. Overall, Dr. Yearden builds the case that any second wave of COVID and any government case for lockdowns, given the well-known principles of epidemiology, will be entirely manufactured. Speaking of epidemiology, 
The branch of medicine which deals with the incidence, distribution, and possible control of the diseases and other factors relating to health, Washoe County's, Washoe County's head epidemiologist and director of epidemiology with the Washoe County Health District for over 14 years, Dr. Randall Todd, was forced to retire by current Washoe County Health District officer, the incredibly incompetent and underqualified Kevin Dick. And didn't you see that Kevin Dick recently came out and said he was going to go against the governor's orders or the governor's suggestion that we may be in, in groups larger than 50? Why would Dick do that? Well, it's because Dick is completely unqualified and should not be in the position. And here's why. Kevin Dick, Washoe County District Health, Health Officer, is completely unqualified and is an incompetent person who doesn't know what he's talking about or what he's doing. Mr. Dick forced the Washoe County Head Epidemiologist and 14-year Director of Epidemiology, uh, Dr. Russell Todd, to retire despite Todd's impressive credentials. Dr. Todd has an advanced degree in public health, 40 years of experience in one small public health department in Michigan, four years, two large public health department in Grand Rapids, Michigan, 10 years, and then, uh, excuse me, uh, then state epidemiologist for the Nevada State Health Division for 12 years, and the Washoe County Health District for 14 years. Kevin Dick merely has a bachelor's degree in engineering, is certified as a Nevada environmental manager with expertise in air quality, and has absolutely no public health experience. Even if Mr. Dick did meet the minimum qualifications to be district health officer, he still lacks the education, credentials, and public health experience, as well as the working relationship with the public and the media. AKA Dick is totally unqualified and has no public health experience. This, my friends, is who the Washoe County Commission is allowing to quarterback this pandemic. You should all be very, very angry because as I just said to you on the front page here, that they're saying that more than half or likely all of the positives are false positives and that the PCR test measures simply the presence, the presence of RNA sequences present at the time, which could be a piece of a dead virus which cannot make the subject sick, cannot be transmitted, and cannot make anyone else sick. But he's still limiting the groups. A guy with a degree in engineering, if I need him to build a tennis court in my backyard, I'll call Dick. But right now he's making the calls on our businesses, our kids in mass, our school sports. Are you kidding me? Washoe County Commission, step up. Washoe City, I mean, you're in a city council, step up. Fire this clown. Get rid of him and get a real epidemiologist in there or someone with a degree in public health. Call Dr. Troy Ross up and ask his opinion on the lockdowns and on keeping people, you know, limited to 50. Ask him about it. Ask someone with a real degree in public health what should be happening right now. They will not agree with the inept and unqualified Kevin Dick. Now, not only that, he has not done anything to warrant the position of health officer and has not earned a master's or terminal degree, yet he's been given the authority to make huge and, quite frankly, appalling decisions. He lacks adequate information, has not been transparent with data, answering reporters' questions with, I don't have the data in front of me or no comment, which is quote for, I don't know the answers because I'm not prepared, or worse yet, it's none of your business. He simply does not know what he's talking about and is severely underqualified for the position he holds. And I hope to God the Washoe County Commission and the others in charge will step up and put someone in place that not only knows what they're doing, but has the training and the experience and the qualifications. Because let me tell you this, Washoe County Commission, next time one of y'all gets sick, you break a leg or something, how about I take you to the vet? Same difference. They can set your leg for you, put a splint on it, right? How's that? Would that be fair? You're trusting our kids' health and our seniors' health and their sport and our student athletes' sports to Kevin Dick, an engineer with a bachelor's degree. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Let me say this. Mr. Dick's relationship with the media is lacking in, in the level of competence, is lacking the level of competence of an experienced public health professional, likely resulting from a deficient background in public health and epidemiology. 
Mr. Dick put someone from environmental health in charge of handling the pandemic when he knew that environmental health does not include services or programs for a pandemic, as can be seen on the Washoe County Health District website. In the seven years since Mr. Dick became district health officer, he has done nothing, 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 okay? He has done nothing at all to support epidemiology and public health preparedness, known as EPHP. When comparatively analyzed with the states that have allowed for sports and large gatherings, which you'll see below, it's proven that people and children are not carriers or spreaders of this disease, as Dick would have you think. To continue, locking people down and suspending school sports or gatherings of more than 50 like Dick is doing is completely insane. And it needs to be stopped. You better rein him in, Washoe County Commission. You better do your job. You've got one of the most unqualified, unexperienced, unprepared people on the planet quarterbacking our businesses, our children, our seniors, and enough is enough. For further breakdown and evidence tending to show that there's no significant danger, see my red state versus blue states analysis below. Here comes the fun, everybody. You're damn right I took time to prepare this. Red states versus blue states. Alabama, 5 million people. Total cases, 155,744. Total deaths, 2,500. Total patients now hospitalized, 776. Total hospital beds, 15,300. Alabama, yes, high school sports. Began in the fall. Games started on August 20 and 21st. They have 5 million people. They have about 600 deaths more than us. Yeah. Arkansas, this is a great one. 3 million people. Total cases, 83,000. Total deaths, 1,300. Oh my God, about 300 less than us. Total hospitalized, 484. And we know this now, guys, because of the CDC, and that only about 6% of those hospitalized for COVID are actually in there for COVID and not other comorbidities that have got them in the hospital. So we could take that number from the 484 hospitalized to probably about 48 or lower, but they still have hospital bed capacity of 9,600. So we're, no, we're nowhere near it. And guys, high school sports started up as normal. The fall season's going as planned in Arkansas, same population. And I say this to you guys because it's very important the governor's directives were very simple back in March. 15 days to slow the spread. Why? Why was it 15 days to slow the spread, everybody? Get in the comments. Talk to me on why we did the 15 days. It was to prevent the overrunning of our hospital and healthcare system, which has not happened and will not happen based on the current data from scientists and those with degrees in public health, epidemiologists, which Kevin Dick is not, and he needs to go. And Washoe County Commission, I don't know how you're going to hold this up in court when they come calling, because the numbers and the statistics and the science are flying in the face of Kevin Dick and smacking him around like a little preschooler. That's what's happening. That's how bad this guy is. Florida, 21 million people. Total cases, 709,000. Total deaths, 14,000, but we know with the adjustment from the CDC of about 6%, we're gonna put that number probably in the, in the I don't know, thousand range, maybe, maybe thousand. But here's the best part, total hospitalized for COVID, again, adjustment down per CDC, put this, the total hospitalized in Florida, 2,000. Bed capacity in Florida, 55,000. Nowhere near. And Florida's open 100%, and these numbers are of yesterday. Thank you very much. Idaho, right above. 1,787,000 people, total cases 42,000, total deaths 469. Uh, total in the hospital for COVID right now, 137. Total hospital beds, 3,400. Fall sports, fall sports started as scheduled. What's going on, guys? So are you trying to tell me, Kevin Dick, there's a different coronavirus in Florida and in Arkansas and in Kansas and in Utah and in Missouri than there is in Nevada? And that's why you're locking everybody down? Or is it because 
you don't know what you're doing because you don't have the training, experience, and qualifications to be making these calls. I think it's the latter. You need to move around. You need to move along. Kansas, right at Nevada, 3 million people. Total cases, 59,000. Total deaths, 678. Patients now hospitalized, 352. State hospital bed capacity, 9,600. A, a fall sports approved games started on September 10th and their practices started back on August 28th. Same amount of people, 3 million. Oh, it's, it's, it's the environment, right? It's the climate. Is that what it is, Kevin Dick? I mean, with the expertise in air quality? And you were wrong the other day, too, on air quality when you said that the coronavirus, because of the smoke, and then the CDC came out and said that the masks don't even filter the smoke, which is about 10 times or 50 times bigger than the coronavirus. So you walk yourself into that one, genius. Now, Missouri. Total case, oh, so Missouri, total population, 6,137,000. Total cases, 129,000. Total deaths, 2,200. Again, guys, total deaths from COVID, 2,200. Let's do the adjustment per the CDC. Nah, not that many, huh? But here's the best part. Total hospitalized for COVID, 1,137. But total hospital bed capacity, almost 19,000. No way it can get overrun. Wow. And Missouri, high school activities, full-blown, full sports. Montana, only a million people, total cases, 13,000, total deaths, 180, total hospitalized, 170, but all high school sports back. Nebraska, 2 million people, 45,000 infected, total deaths, 478, total patients hospitalized with COVID right now, 215, adjustment per the CDC, we'll put it in the 25 mark. State hospital bed capacity, 6,900. 200 in the hospital, 6,900 capacity. Oh, and yes, Nebraska High School Sports announced on July 20th that it was prepared to begin the fall sports season as scheduled and practices began on August 10th. Kansas, same population, 30 million, uh, 3 million, uh, um, excuse me, the Nebraska. Same, almost same population, 2 million, but we don't have the spike and the gold standard that the governor talked about. Let's go to one more. Oklahoma, 4 million people. Total cases, 87,000. And that's just like Nevada. 3 million people, total cases, 79,000. But back to Oklahoma. Total deaths, 1,031. So Oklahoma, who has almost a million more people than Nevada, has about 600 less deaths. And currently hospitalized, they have 628 people with hospital bed capacity of 12,000. And their high school sports started as planned. Wow. So what is this gold standard Governor Sisolak is talking about? Is it a gold standard that doesn't appear anywhere else in the United States? Governor, you said that you were protecting the residents, the workers, and the visitors. From, from what? Is the coronavirus different back east than it is here? I didn't, I didn't think so. South Carolina, 5,148,000 people. Total cases, 148,000. Total deaths, 3,400. And again, guys, let's do our adjustment per the CDC, the 6% that only died from coronavirus and not other comorbidities. And that's going to put that number much lower, whatever 6% of 3,400 is. But total hospitalized, 729,000. I mean, 729 people. State hospital bed capacity, 12,100. And high school sports, yes. Pushed back three weeks to September 8th. First game in the state started September 25th. And as of today, with 5 million people, South Carolina has had no peak or increase in death rates or hospitalizations. Texas, 28 million, almost 29 million people. Total cases, 787,000. Total deaths, 16,000. Let's do our adjustment per the CDC. Total hospitalized, 3,344. Total hospital beds in Texas, 66,000. We're nowhere near overrunning the healthcare system. Let's go, guys. Let's talk about this in the comments. Let's get loud. Let's get our kids back in high school sports. And Texas, yes, all fall activities got started. But here's the last most important one, Utah. 
COVID statistics, 3,200,000 people, just like Nevada. Total cases, 79 or 73,000. Nevada, 79,000. Total deaths in Utah, 459 people total. Total deaths in Nevada, 1,600 and climbing. Total hospitalized in Utah, 243. Total hospitalized in Nevada, 452. And Utah got the go-ahead on July 9th to continue fall season as scheduled. July 9th, they started high school sports. They're right above us with the same population, three times less than death. What are you doing, Governor? What are you doing, Kevin Dick? You have no clue. You have no plan. Your gold standard is nonsense. Now, red state totals, you're gonna love this. Total red state population of the 12 states I listed are 84,551,000 with a total case infection rate of 2,334,000, total deaths of 43,000 with a death case ratio of 1.8%. Boy, are you guys ready to hear about the blue states? Well, let's just jump into California. Total cases, 819,000 total cases of infections with a population of 4 million. Guess how many people died? 15,900. Almost similar to Florida, where the population's 20 million there, 40 million there. It seems like this herd immunity thing, only a certain amount are gonna be infected and die. And anybody with a degree in public health or epidemiology would know that, so maybe that's the reason they ran the doctor out of the Washoe County Health district officer position. Think that because he wouldn't be agreeing with Kevin Dick? Probably, probably not. Um, and what did they do? So total hospitalizations in California, California, 40 million people. They say there's 3,200 people and 42 million people, 40 million people in there for COVID. And we know with the adjustment, that's probably more, uh, I don't know, man, a few hundred that actually are in there with COVID and they shut the state of California down. They've had the highest, toughest restrictions, the biggest business closures, and they've moved the fall sports to January. And they have the same infection rate and the same death rate, almost slightly higher than Florida, who's open 100%. Colorado, almost 6 million people, total cases 70,000, less than Nevada. Total deaths, 2,000, will be there soon. Total patients hospitalized for COVID, 268. Hospital bed capacity, 10,500. And yes, Colorado did vote to go back on September 16th to allow football, but then they're gonna kick everybody else into March and May 1st. Nevada, total cases, 79,000. Total population, 3 million. Total deaths, 1,600 and climbing. Total hospitalized 452, hospital bed capacity 6,500. And the NIAA, the good old NIAA on July 23rd, pushed winter sports back to January and the spring calendar to an April beginning. NIA does not anticipate state championships will be held. You guys are doing a fantastic job, NIAA. Clown show. New Jersey, 8,800,000. Total cases, 209,000. Total deaths, 16,000, almost the same as Florida, half the population. Hardest, most toughest restrictions. Total hospitalized though, 479. Why do we keep seeing this? 400 to 600, 400 to 600 hospitalized. State hospital bed capacity, 20,000. And what happened? They kicked high school sports again. That's really fair guys, and finally, and last but not least, New York, 20 million people, total cases, 500,000, total deaths, 33,200. But total patients hospitalized now, 605, 605. And when we make the adjustment, it's probably, it's probably 70, 80 people in there for COVID with hospital bed capacity of 52,000. There's no overrunning of the healthcare or medical system happening. Why are they still closed? And of course, they kicked all fall sports postponed until March 1st, 2021. Highest restrictions, 
highest deaths in the blue states. And here's my COVID blue state totals. With a total population listed of 83 million and total case infection of 1,626,000 and total death uh, total of 74,000, it makes the blue state death case ratio 4.6%. So everybody, here's where we're at. We need everybody to stop the nonsense. I know our president tested positive coronavirus. People are going to test positive. It's a virus. You can't stop it. But the death rates have plummeted. The hospitalizations have plummeted. Kids need to go back to schools and the masks need to be taken off. You need to wash your hands and you need to be safe with your protocols. That's of course in the restaurants, of course when you can't socially distance and you're closer to people. If you wanna wear a mask, go ahead and wear it. But in all these states that I've read to you, they're not even enforcing masks. They're only enforcing masks in public buildings or on public transportation. And in some counties where they feel that they, you know, probably blue counties where they think you need it. But at the end of the day, everyone, these masks are just a show of force and they're garbage and they're nonsense. And they're providing a very false sense of security. So again, I say to the Washoe County Commission, it's time for Kevin Dick to go. It's time to put a real epidemiologist in there, a doctor, someone with a degree and experience in public health. I recommend calling Dr. Troy Ross and asking him, or how about this? Why don't we just have a public hearing and I get to bring my infectious disease doctors and some of my epidemiologists and you can bring Kevin Dick and we'll have a little discussion and let's see how it goes when we're done. But the nonsense has to stop. The distance learning has failed. It's failing our kids and we need our student athletes back on their courts, fields and mats and we need it now. N N N C or whatever you are, NIAA, get a clue. Wake up. Look back east. If they can all have sports, why is Nevada different? Be leaders. We don't lead by sitting down and saying, oh God, we're going to wait. Wait for what? The coronavirus is the coronavirus. It's the same thing here as it is in Oklahoma, as it is in Arkansas, as it is in Florida, Idaho, Alabama, Kansas, Missouri, Montana, South Carolina, and Texas and Utah, where they all have high school sports and they don't have half the death rate we do. Death rate, red states, 1.8. Death rate, blue states, 4.8. Toughest restrictions, blue states. Least restrictions, red states. Simple science, guys. Simple science. I'm going to ask everybody again, get in the comments, get loud. If you think this is some nonsense, if you think this state needs to be open, if you think that Kevin Dick should resign or be fired, then you need to talk to your Washoe County Commissioners. You need to let them know now how you feel. You got to let the city council know how you feel. And you got to let everybody know that enough is enough. Open our school, open our states, open everything. Everything needs to be open. All businesses, all sports, get them going. Make it happen now. Let's not wait another day. These kids will never get their youth back. They'll never get their youth back. They'll never get their senior season back. Don't do them like this. Not, not on the fear mongering. No more fear mongering. No more panic driven nonsense. Get real professionals in place quarterbacking this, not an environmental air quality specialist. Please, I'm asking you to please fix the, cre the situation you created when you let him let our epidemiologists go. Fix it and fix it now. Thank you.